So we have our 10 observations and we want to work out the Z scores for each of them. So again we have our formula which just says that we calculate the Z score of an observation by subtracting the sample mean and dividing by the sample standard deviation. Our mean value for this case is 49 and our standard deviation is 2.789. So we'll take the first observation, which is 48, subtract the sample mean value of 49 from this, and then divide by the standard deviation of 2.789. To work out the z-scores of all our observations, we just use the exact same method, and I have all the values included below. So for our first observation of 48, our z-score is minus 0.36, and what that means is that this observation is 0.36 standard deviations below the mean. Our second observation of 48 has a z-score of minus 0.36, which again means that this observation is 0.36 standard deviations below the mean. We continue up to our last observation of 46, which has a z-score of minus 1.08, and this is 1.08 standard deviations below the mean. So now if we look to our standardized values and calculate their mean and variance, we can see that the mean of these values is 0 and the variance is 1. Another point made about z-scores is that we can use them to compare two or more recorded variables. This is because the z-scores are standardized values and these values have no units. Even if the two variables we wish to record are measured in different units, once the observations are standardized, our new values will be on the same scale, allowing us to compare the two variables. So we'll go back to our recorded maths exam marks. From the previous slide we saw how to calculate the z-scores of each of these values which has worked out as follows. Our highest z-score is 1.79, meaning that this represents the furthest value above the mean, in other words the highest mark. What I've done next is recorded the English exam marks for 10 students. Again, we use our formula for the z-score in which we subtract the sample mean of our data from each observation and divide by the standard deviation. The mean of our sample is 71.2 and our standard deviation is 1.989. So we calculate the z-scores of each observation by subtracting 71.2 and dividing by 1.989 which gives us the following standardized values. To show that we can compare two variables, we have our z-scores for our maths exam marks and our English exam marks. By looking at both, we can see that our highest z-score for maths exam marks was 1.79 and our highest z-score for English exam marks was 1.9. We are looking for the highest value in this case because we're dealing with exam marks and a higher exam mark is best. So a z-score of 1.79 shows that our highest exam mark in maths was 1.79 standard deviations above the mean. Our highest z-score for English marks was 1.9, showing that the highest English exam mark was 1.9 standard deviations above the mean. With the higher of the two being 1.9, the higher mark in English is more remarkable than the higher mark in maths. In general, we would standardize our values because our two recorded variables were on different scales, and standardized values have no units, so it makes it easier to compare the two. In our case, our two recorded variables have the same units. They are both measured in percentages. I have standardized our values because a mark of 70% in maths would not translate as the same as a mark of 70% in an English exam. The different levels of difficulty of the respective subjects would make comparing the raw percentage marks not entirely accurate. Another way that z-scores can be used is to identify outliers in our data. An outlier is an unusual observation that doesn't follow the pattern of the rest of the data. For example, say we sat five exams and these were our grades. All our marks are above 80 apart from one which is 30. This is an unusual observation as we did so well in all our other exams, so this will be classed as an outlier. If our data is normally distributed and we have calculated the z-scores of our observations, a z-score that is greater than plus or minus 3 indicates that the observation could be an outlier. The development of these resources was supported by the NDLR and the Department of Mathematics and Statistics at NUI Maynooth, and they will be available from the following websites.